السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته في هذه الحلقة الجديدة إن شاء الله اللي غادي تكون معنا واحد ضيف صراحة غادي يكون الحوار بالإنجليزية لأن الضيف ما كتعرفش العربية وإن شاء الله غادي نحاول نترجموه يعني أي حاجة ما فهمتوهاش غنحاولوا نترجموها وي هاف جوزي هاو ار يو Uh, make sure you remove yourself from uh, from the mute to unmute yourself. Okay, just waiting for the guests to uh, unmute. So today's topic is going to be about uh, completing form I-130, uh, the consular process and uh, all the steps from A to Z uh, will be presented like a PowerPoint. And also, we'll be uh, taking any questions. Uh, how are you? Can you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. How are you? All right. Can you see my my presentation? Yes, I see. Okay. So uh, before we st hold on, okay. Uh, so can you can you because you shared the wrong screen? If you can. Uh, let's make sure, like you showed me before. Yeah. So, as I, as I mentioned before, uh, it's going to be like in English, but if anyone has question that doesn't understand uh, or like any uh, information that you want in Arabic, you may just tell us the slide number and we explain the process in Arabic. Uh, so far, uh, we can't translate like slide to slide. We're just going to uh, go through all the process. Okay, beautiful. So uh, before we start the presentation, Sister Josie, uh, would you please uh, give us like a brief uh, introduction, a uh, small bio about yourself so you know who we are with? Of course. So again, my name is Josie. I am um, born in um, California, but my nationality is Salvadorian, and I married a very gentle Moroccan man from Casa. Um, we've been married five years. And as a result of my visa journey with him, 
um, I saw a need for other couples or other um, people to uh, um, get help through the immigration process. And so my family as well, um, they are immigrants. And so I was doing these immigration processes for them already, not realizing this is what everyone else needs as well. So because of that, I did form a nonprofit and um, I'm wanting to help not only my community, but my husband's community as well. And so, what's the name of your nonprofit? So my nonprofit is um, the Resource Center. And then I have a DBA, which is this one, the visa specialist. And so my um, my um, immigration consultant mm -hmm. license is under this, the visa specialist. Okay. So, إخوان الأخوات إن شاء الله نطلبوا منكم أنكم تشاركوا اللايف الناس باش يستفدوا منه لأن ما درنا هاد هاد الموضوع هذا حتى كانت وصلوا بحد عدد كبير ديال الكوشن about the process I want to كيفاش الناس اللي كيبغوا يعمروا الراس مع الثاني lot of question about the consular steps so إلا كان ممكن تشاركوا هاد اللايف مع الناس اللي غيستفدوا منه وأي question we're gonna leave it إن شاء الله at the end uh, Sister Josie, you may start your uh, presentation, and uh, if I see any question, I will leave it uh, all the way at the end, and we answer all of them, inshallah. Okay, so I'm going to um, talk about the alien petition, the petition for alien relative, uh, doing the consular processing. So this is um, where the beneficiary or the immigrant is still in Morocco. So, and uh, and this is like for uh, both for uh, green card holder and for citizen or uh, this is only for citizenship. Um, most of the information I have is applies to both. Okay. The only thing I didn't integrate um, was the step that the green card holder does with the bulletin. But I can mm -hmm. go ahead and show the screen on how to read it. Okay. Cool. Okay. All right, so we're going to go over the I-130 process. That's what it's mostly known for. And the I-130 is the form. So the consular processing has three steps. The first one is USCIS, NVC, and then the consulate. So each one has a role. So for us to get acquainted with the terms, um, like I said, it goes through the three steps. USCIS, we're waiting for approval. Just because it says approval doesn't mean our whole case is approved. Doesn't mean you get the visa. That means um, USCIS is responsible for making sure that the applicant, which is the US citizen or the green card holder, um, qualifies to petition this relative. So that's all they're looking for. They're going through a checklist, making sure that you meet that checklist. And so NBC, the next one, they check that you financially meet the, the requirements and um, they gather the security check information. And then lastly, that's the consulate. That's where you want to get the approval. And so once you're approved, we know it as issued. Your visa is issued. Uh, can you please go back to the other slide? I'm just going to explain this quickly because it's very important. Uh, the next slide. All right. So here are three steps of the process when you pay for the family member. The first one is when you have the immigration in America. When you say it's approved, it doesn't mean that your dossier is approved. It means that you can support your family member or you can support your family member. Based on the information that you have in this form. The second one is the NVC, the Department of State. You have the right to the DACA form. 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 You have the right حال هنا في هذا المثال خدينا الكونسيلا ديال كازابلانكا تما فين غيكونوا مثلا الميديكال تيست وغيكون كذلك الانترفيو اوكي كان جو هيد جوزي اوكي اند سو يو سي اي اس سمبليفايز ات اون ذير ويب سايت دي بروفايد ا تشيك ليست فور اس اند ات لوكس لايك ا لوت اوف ستاف بت اف يو جو ثرو ات ون باي ون اتس ايزير تو انديرستاند وي غونا توك اباوت مور اباوت بيتيشنينغ فور ا سباوس but this also applies when you're petitioning for another relative, like a child, a son, daughter, or a parent. But I'm going to gener uh, generalize it and talk about a, a spouse, a um, husband or wife. Okay. And this is for both green card and for U.S. citizen petitioner. So this, I simplified it a little bit to 
match what Ca Casablanca likes to see. Um, and so in the groups that I run, it's mostly, um, I mean, almost all of them. It's, um, in, what is it? Um, Cross-cultural marriage, what do you guys call it? Uh, it's like a different culture, like uh, people married to a different uh, races. Yeah. What, mixed so, marriage? Mixed marriage. There you okay. go. So mm -hmm. um, it's mixed marriage, but it could mm -hmm. apply to um, say nationality, nationality or mm -hmm. child. So they like to see this information. This is a sample. Before mm -hmm. we only we could only mail, but now we could do online. And so this is a simplified checklist. So you have to make sure that the documents are there for the petitioner and the beneficiary, that all um, documents not in English need to be translated mm -hmm. and they need to be certified. And so CASA likes to see official stamps, but legally you don't have to get a stamp. <laughs> you just have to certify, but CASA likes to see it. So we'll, we do it. <laughs> And so I also Wait, provide examples. What about like, uh, you know, certify certification and all that stuff? And you send that information through mail or like through scanned documents. Is that considered like an original or it has to be mailed? So for the initial USCIS portion, it, it could be, it has to be copies. Do not send originals. So if you're going to mail your application, do copies do not send originals because it's going to be difficult to get the originals back you can get them but it's a little bit more difficult to get them back so send copies that's what they recommend as well when you do online of course you upload copies anyway so that online would be the preferred method although if you're doing mixed marriage you always want to put like a lot of um initial evidence Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people choose to mail instead because then you could like mail, put a lot of information. Whereas when you do online, you have to limit each file. Okay. Good to know. Okay. So the form I-130 um, is the USCIS form to petition a relative. So a U.S. citizen has immediate visas available. They don't have to wait once they petition they have a visa for that relative. Um, whereas a permanent resident, they have to wait for a visa to become available. Every year, they only issue a certain amount of visas for each class. And so um, residents have to wait, uh, whereas US citizens do not. Okay. And who can file, like I said, a U.S. citizen or an LPR. And they specify this only because if, like, you're here on asylum or, like, on a student visa, then you can't petition a relative. So that's why they specify a U.S. citizen or an LPR. You have to be um, 21 years or older. And green card holders cannot petition for their parents or siblings. Okay, so who can you petition for? You can petition for a spouse, wife, or husband. And I know it might be controversial, but even in Morocco, they do have same-sex um, petitions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it could be any unmarried child under 21. If they're over 21 or married, then they will have to wait, just like the um, LPRs would. It's faster, but they still have to wait. You could petition siblings. Um, married son or daughter, unmarried son or daughter over 21 years. So we have to remember again that LPRs cannot petition their parents or their siblings. Okay. Okay. So again, like I mentioned before, immediate relatives, U.S. citizens have access to immediate visas for their family members and for their children is under 21. Um, if their children are over 21, then it goes to family pres preference. So well, the 21 age is being determined based on the received age or like the time of the uh, processing the application? Um, the age when they filed the application. Okay, so, so if their application is approved before they turn 21, um, then they go, then that's okay if they turn 21 and they don't have the visa in hand, as long as it's approved at USCIS before 21. Okay. And okay, so again, um, green card holders have to wait for a visa. 
and all the processes are the same and i'll show you where the difference comes in where um, family preference has to wait and thankfully um casa is not that backed up with visas for um, family preferences um so uh, un unlike other countries where they wait two three 10, 15 years, um, CASA's really good about it right now. I think they're behind only like five or six months. Oh, okay. And see people complaining because I heard a lot of people say like there's big delays and uh, we're still waiting for like the processing time already arrived, but still there is no action in their uh, files. Yeah, it, it had slowed down. They had it. They weren't doing any family preference, only F1s. Um, they weren't doing the family preference throughout the entire COVID and they just lifted it about four or five months ago. Um, so now they're starting to speed up with those interviews. They do get stuck at um, USCIS because green card holder applications, they all go to the California Service Center. And so that's the longest service center, like the longest wait time. And so that's where the holdup is. But once you get through the first stage USCIS, then the other part is smooth, just like US citizens. Okay, sounds good. So you can file two ways. You can file online or you can file via mail. And these are the lock boxes where you send them. And it's important to take mind of the lock boxes because if you file via mail, you're sending it to a lock box. They just make sure that all the documents are in there. They're not checking to make sure that you qualify. They're checking to make sure that your application is there, the, the passport copy, birth certificate, like they go through that same checklist you use. Mm -hmm. That's what the lockbox does. So if your application is complete as in paperwork, then they forward it to a service center. So, uh, so it doesn't have to be like based on your location. It, it determines like where to file. So there is like uh, those lock box where they collect all the entries and they distribute them to service centers. Yes. So the lock box is, goes according to your state. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll link the where each state has to send their applications. Um, so you send it to the lock box according to your state but the service center is randomly assigned. Okay, got you. But they, will, they let you know because sometimes when you check the case status, you have to enter your service center. So when you get the receive date, it tells you where it's being processed. Mm -hmm. So okay. that'll be next. Mm -hmm. Again, when you do online, you don't have to worry about this. You submit everything online. It gives you a chance to submit the evidence, um, insert pictures, and you don't have to worry about a lockbox. You just press submit and it's out of your hands. Yes. And it checks it automatically because you're entering the documents in the titled section. Okay. So that's why you get a receipt right away. All right, so these are some important terms that we need to know only because throughout your whole visa journey, you're gonna be seeing these terms and it gets confusing a lot of the time but it, 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 then once you learn them, it's easier to navigate. So the most important, remember that the applicant the, is the petitioner, is the sponsored. So applicant, petitioner, and sponsor mean the same thing. That would be the U.S. citizen or the green card holder trying to bring a family member. So that means the same thing. Beneficiary is the person trying to immigrate, your family member in Morocco. Okay. So move forward. All right, so once you submit your application and USCIS says, okay, everything's in there, um, they're gonna send you a receipt online. It's, it'll be on your online account. It'll look exactly like this. If you do it via mail, you'll get it via mail um, and it'll look like this. So important to note, you will be using your priority date. That's right here. Okay. So keep that in mind. You'll be using the service center that you belong to It'll be down here on the left. And of course, um, who's petitioning? U.S. citizen or green card holder? Who are you petitioning? So always know those things. Um, if you don't know who your, where your service center is, when you see your case number the, um, right here, 
it'll have three letters at the beginning that usually determines where it went. If you filed online, it'll be IOE. Mm. So you just have to wait for the paper receipt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's say we filled out our, our USCIS application. We're waiting for approval. Mm. And did I provide a sample? I didn't. For what? For the AVC, you haven't provided? No, no, for USCIS, an application. Ah, uh, no, you just uh, provide like a general information. Yeah. So let me exit out really quickly. Okay. And. Okay, I'll let you. So, here I can tell you about the process that you need to use in the application that I want to read. And inshallah, I'm going to be able to person here in America and what I need to use. البرسل اللي في المغرب شنو الوثائق اللي يحتاج شنو المراحل اللي خصك دير من وراء مباشره ملي تعمر له اي 1 3 كيفاش تقلب ستارز ديالك شنو من الحوايج اللي خصك دير ملي يمشي للملف القنصليه وخصك تجمع دير الانترفيو سو هاد المراحل ان شاء الله هما اللي غادي نتبعوا مع الاخت جوزي ار اي جاهد اوكي سو ذا ذا يو اس اي اس ويب سايت جيفز يو a place to download the form. So we're going to, we can just enter the phone num the form number, which is I-130. And there it is. And see, you can do the paper version. I'm going to open it. And you can do the online. For online, you need an account, yeah? Yeah, you need to create an account. It's free. Mm -hmm. Both of you can create an account, but only one can submit the information. So if you put the receipt on the beneficiary and the applicant, it won't work. Only one of you can keep track. I like to submit. You can look at it, but you can't submit. And if you file uh, by paper and later on you created an account and you want to track your information, is there an option online where you can, we can add this information later on? Yes. So if you file on paper... Mm -hmm. um you create an online account mm -hmm. this am i one move <laughs> okay so you create an online account and you enter the receipt number that we saw in yeah, the one receipt in, number mm -hmm. yeah so you'll enter the receipt number that we saw into the my ucis account that you're going to create okay and that's how you can track the progress because everything else will be done electronically okay so this is what a I-130 looks like. It's very simple, but at the same time, very important to put the correct information. And I know it, it seems overwhelming and we don't want to mess up because it's such an important process. But at the same time, don't overthink it. Um, I've been in a few interviews with council, with officers and I was so nervous. And I, I was like, they're like, why didn't you correct this? And I was like, well, I didn't know I could. And she just took a red pen and wrote over what I had written. And I was like, okay. She's like, don't overthink it. Just write it in. So that provided some assurance. And that was years ago when I was just starting with my family. So um, it's very basic. This is about the applicant. So the first portion is the applicant, the U.S. citizen or the green card holder, their information. So the person um, overseas, the applicant, I mean, uh, the beneficiary, who is going to be the part of the all the So all the information of the beneficiary is going to be part one, or uh, it's going to be something for the person that's filing, the petitioner? So part one is the petitioner. Oh, the petitioner. Then oh. all this is filled out by the petitioner. I mean, the beneficiary could do it if they have the information, but let's just keep it straightforward and it'll be the petitioner. So me, the U.S. citizen, the first part is about me. Mm -hmm. When it talks about spouse, it's talking about my current spouse, who I'm married to right now. So you would say that I'm filing for my spouse. Can, you, my can spouse. you make it, please, uh, full screen, if you don't mind? Yeah. So look a bit. Um, F5. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, thank you. Let me let me download it so I could open it. So, uh, any question? اللي عنده شي سؤال يخلي تلخر وهذا اللايف إن شاء الله غيبقى يعني أي واحد بغى يعمر الابليكيشن 
راه يمكن يشوف هنا في اللايف ويعمر الابليكيشن وغيكون واحد الواتساب تاع جروب غادي نحطو ان شاء الله من بعد اللي عنده اديشنال كويشن يقدر يدخل أه سواء في البدية ولا سواء في التراكين ديال البروسيس اوكي اوكي سو وان مور تيك اف يو كان جست كليك دا ارو ان يور رايت جست لايك تو جيت Yeah, that's it. Good. Thank you. Okay, no problem. All right. So it tells you straight here. Start here. Don't click anything here. This is not for us. Start here and then move on down. And this is actually really good to print out and do on your own because all of this you're going to answer online as well. So that way you're not like trying to figure out what information you need. Everything that's on the form we're going to need online. So it's a good practice as well. So I'm going to file for my spouse. And if you're filing for this, this petition for your child or parent, select one of the boxes. I'm not. It's for my spouse, so I'm just going to skip it. If the beneficiary is your brother or sister, are you related by adoption? This doesn't apply. We leave it blank. Did you gain lawful permanent resident status or citizenship through adoption? I was born in the USA, so I'm going to say no. Alien registration number. Again, it's telling you who it's talking about, petitioner, me, the U.S. citizen. I don't have one. So it won't let you put like N.A. It won't let you. So I, you, if you have Adobe DC, I don't think I have it on this one. I would have to go online. But you can um, put it, it there. Says, it says if it is, so it's not even required. Uh-huh. But if you really want to like make sure that you don't leave any blank spaces, uh, it's okay. okay to handwrite it. But... In reality, this is not something they're looking at. It's not important. USCIS online account, even though we have an online account, that's not what they're talking about. So let's leave it blank. Oops. So what, what kind of online account they're talking there? Like, is there any other accounts? Yeah, there used to be a form when they would mail your, your receipt for like um, political asylum or... Mm -hmm. Um, adjustment of status, they used to give you an account number and it would be printed on your receipt. And so when they're referencing the on, uh, online account number, it's on that receipt. Okay. But they don't do that anymore. So you, we just leave it blank. Gotcha. Okay. Social security number, which we all have one. So, and I think it won't let you move forward if you put that. Yeah, I did. Okay. My full name, family, last name. I haven't changed my married last name. <laughs> I mean, you can put just standard one. You don't have to put your... <laughs> <laughs> and if you did change it, then put the married last name. It doesn't influence their decision if you changed your name or not. Okay, it continues to the petitioner. Other last names used. So... Let's pretend I did change my name. So that's what my ID and my passport would say. It has to reflect what your passport says. Okay. Then I would use, well, I, my maiden name used to be that. And then you just, you can leave it blank or write it again. So like if you have any names that you use in the past, you have to, to add them in. The, right, because if you were adopted or maybe um, your name is in your lang in your um, language, and now you change it to an American name. Okay, mm -hmm. that's good. Okay, so all this is pretty self-explanatory for the petitioner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, history. like that information, like history, names, and all that stuff. I don't think so. Anybody they will have issue yeah. with it. Yeah. So this is within the last five years. So don't worry about if you haven't moved in the last five years, it's just one address. Okay, marital status. We were petitioning for our spouse, of course, is gonna be married. Mm -hmm. And then if you are married just this one time, you would put one. If you were previously married and divorced, and this is your second marriage, you put two. So whatever applies to you. And if you notice, there is a space for an old, and we've had a few of those. Oh, I've never seen somebody. Uh -huh. Okay, so we're going to continue place of marriage. Um, and this is sometimes difficult because Morocco address is different than here in the States. Mm -hmm. So you just put where you got married. 
can't put a state. Okay, and I, I want to explain that. So for Siri, always put Casablanca, Meknes, Tanja, هادوما السيتي بروفانس هما العملات الحي محمدي سباتا المنزه الرياض كاينين بزاف يعني السيتي ديما كتكون هي المدينه الكبيره والبروفانس هي التاون ولا المينيسيبال كايد اوكي سو You could put the exact city, like there's different little villages in there. You could put the exact one, mm -hmm. but I just generalize, generalize and put Casablanca. That's all they want to know where it was at. Province, we don't have one. Country, of course. I married in Morocco. Wherever you married, you could put that in there. Okay. Okay. All right. If currently married first and then list all your prior ones. Okay. So... This is your, your, you put your current spouse first. So current, I'm just gonna put it like this so you can know, current husband name. That way you know, it's your current one. Okay. When did you marry? Let's say we got married two, one, 23. And that information has to be accurate. You match like the marriage and all the information that's gonna be in the documents. Yeah, you get it from your marriage license. Morocco has two dates, and we they tend to get confused between the court date and the adult date. It's the adult date. date. That's when you um your date of marriage. Uh, okay, I just want to explain. Adult means adult. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then if you have been previously married, you put that person's information here. So X husband or wife name so i think so far like anyone can complete this and uh, there is no like a uh, science fiction that people will stuck on something just regular okay. information. um the one where most people get confused about it's when you start the beneficiary okay so beneficiary is the person who's immigrating remember that the street if it doesn't fit it's okay to print it and handwrite it Sometimes you do have to write the whole thing, like two rules, something, something. I like you can write the whole thing on there. It's okay. Okay. All right. So let's continue on. Um, the same questions they ask the applicant, they're going to ask the beneficiary if they've been married before. They don't care if you've been married before. Just tell them you have. You don't have to like hide it i've had a few people who didn't want to share that information um because they people in their own in morocco didn't know or the family didn't know the other person was had been previously married mm -hmm. no one else is going to see this be, besides uscis okay okay let's see employment that's another one um if you're not employed right here it's okay to put unemployed What about housewives? You can put housewife, homemaker. Okay. You can put uh, that. It's okay. okay. Um, if you're in between jobs, just generalize it. Like if you did, you're doing, you're a vendor, but you've been doing that for 10 years, you could put self-employed because you're your own boss. So you could put that. If you don't remember the address of your employer, it's okay to put... The street name only um so it's not so crucial they want to match the information that you say with whatever record they find in your um what is a criminal record and they will ask you about these things at the interview so make sure you know what you wrote yeah well if uh, if you input in like matching information you don't have to remember anything because that's the accurate information right mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see what else. The jobs always comes out. Interpreter, that's if someone like helped you to fill it out and they interpret it for you. But you typically the benefit the applicant who does it. Okay. Now here where it says if any prepare, well, if someone helped you, yeah, you could put their name. But if you did it for your partner, you don't have to put it. You could, it doesn't hurt, but you don't have to. Okay. Okay, and then that's it. I always use 
additional information to explain anything that I did didn't understand or needed more space. For example, like the employment, you could put self-employed employed vendor for 10 years in, in the same field. Whoop. Or let's say, because it'll ask about your parents. Let's say you don't know your father's name, which is common here in the States. <laughs> you yeah, so if it's like any clarification, uh, you're thinking like doing it in the application will create like confusion or like right. create like a missed interruptions. So it's better to provide any additional clarification in that section, 5D. Correct. And if everything is, is, is okay and you don't see like everything is clear, you don't have to add it. It's just like optional. Correct. So after that, um, there is a space for this one. Um, you would sign it, the applicant would sign it. When you do paper, you also have to do I-130A. That's for the beneficiary. Mm -hmm. When you do it online, it's already integrated. Uh, so online, it it comes with it, and the paper, you just have to print another time, uh, I-130A, and send it with the I-130? Correct. And it's pretty much the same that we filled out here. Mm -hmm. The only thing is that um, people tend to get confused because it says that they have to sign it. If your partner is living abroad, they don't have to sign it. Okay, so you just fill it up and you attach it. You don't have, it doesn't require a signature. Correct. Okay. A lot of people take it with them when they're over there and have the partner sign, but in reality, it's not needed. Makes sense. Okay, so we're gonna move forward. Got the receipt. Okay, we submit our application. We're going to wait and wait and wait. So after you get your receipt, how long, gonna... like uh, approximately, like if you have like a time frame, how long you wait after you submit your application before it gets approved? So that's why the uh, service center is important because it depends on the service center. Some service centers are faster than others. The slowest one is California. Um, so you there is a, a place you can check. Would you like, do you want me to show? I mean, like you can, uh, you can do it. Like uh, most of people didn't know how to check their cases okay. online, but you may. Yeah. So for right now, um, approximately 10 and a half months is the shortest wait. And the longest, of course, is California. I think there are like 28 months. Wow. But That's... average is about 10 and a half to 18 months. But you don't choose your service center like it's being distributed to that service center based on your ge geographic location of the lock box that you showed us with the USPS. Yeah, so the only one you get to choose is the lock box according to your state. Then okay. the lock box says, okay, which service center has least applications? Let's send it there. So you don't choose the lock box does. Okay, got you. Okay, so you waited all those 10 and a half, 18 months, and finally you got your approval. So you're done. This is the part where you the green card holders split. Green card holders don't automatically move to NVC. US citizens do. Green card holders have to wait for a visa to become available for their family member. And that's when you use the bulletin. Right now, there's no wait for Morocco. So do you want me to show the bulletin yes yes you can okay. and that's when you check the monthly bulletin about uh like wh what is the cutoff date and uh, mm -hmm. what days are they doing now right okay good and اللي عنده اي سؤال يخليه للاخر وان شاء الله في في نهايه اللايف غنكتب واحد الناراتيف غادي نتفرج في اللايف عاود ثاني ونعاود نكتبوا بالعربيه الناس اللي ما كيفهموش الانجليزيه يقدروا يدخلوا لي ان شاء الله و اللي عندهم شي كواشر دي كان كونتاكت مي اور كونتاكت جوزي سو فار داز لوك لايك اني ثينغ كومبليكيتد سو اول رايت سو ذيس از ذا فيزا بيلتر فروم 
so that's why it's important to know what class you are so most most common is FTA. can you just like go all the way to the top so people will know where to oh, get yeah. the information thank you so visa built and this is for january 2023 so go ahead okay and the other thing is any type of visa so you just look up your visa category and you know which which file or which case they're uh, they're doing at this moment all right so guys. most commonly is f2a green card holders petitioning for their partner or their spouse or their kids so this is the most common one so let's use that one as an example f2a so family um the timelines i always do this i always go to the second chart don't use the first chart, go to the second chart. Because the second chart is the earliest date you can um, move on to NBC. So let's look at F2A here. And let's look for our country. Our country, let's say Morocco, is under this one. It's generalized, all um, areas except those listed. So if you see it's current, actually they're all current. So we can all move on to NBC. So F2A is current. We don't have to wait. Let's say that we did have to wait. This is the first chart. The first chart tells us when the last day to file. So the second is the first day to file. And first is the last day to file. So kind of think of it, they're, okay. they're opposites. <laughs> So let's say we have a date instead of C, we have like a certain mm -hmm. date in there. So that means like that's the cutoff dates where when your visa is going to become available or when it's uh, your uh, file going to go to MVC. Yeah, this is the last day for you to um, tell for NBC to for NBC to be applied in onto your case. So if you miss that day, then you miss your chance. <laughs> Uh, which okay. most people don't because they're up to date with it so thankfully right now there's no wait so that's the only step that's different for green card holders u.s citizens okay. we don't worry about that Oop. okay so now we're approved we're going to wait those 10 and a half to 18 months we're not going to hear anything for those 10 to 18 months even if you ask Emma or you send an inquiry, you could try to expedite, but that's a different um, story or process. But we don't hear anything until the very end when we say they tell us you're approved. You get a notice saying you're approved. Okay, you get that in the mail or like it comes, uh, it shows in, uh, in in your online account? You Both. It shows on your online account for the applicant. The beneficiary won't get any any mail at this point. So it shows on the it goes via snail mail for the applicant and it shows on the account. Okay, gotcha. So you move on to NVC. Now NVC does this next portion. NVC makes sure that um, your financials. Um, I'm gonna go back to the other one. Make okay. sure that um, your financials are. Um, applicable that you qualify for it financially and this is where you pay fees so this is the checklist this is exactly the checklist nbc gives used to give when uh, you did paper filing now it's online only so okay. use this list to check off everything you need before you even open your nbc account so you're no longer going to use ucis account you're going to be going to nbc account so this is the information i just want everyone to look at it the top portion okay number two that's the beneficiary and it's important to know its originals because we're going to need that at the end and then three and under it's the applicant petitioner so have those at hand so this is the steps for nvc nvc you're going to have a case creation so you have your USAIS approval and now you're waiting. Okay, what's the next step? You're waiting for NBC to send you a welcome letter with your invoice number and case number. And usually it's about two weeks. Um, after that, you have to pay your fees. All this you do on the NBC platform. So you have to pay your fees. You cannot move forward 
without paying your fees. And it's okay if you pay one first and then the other, but you won't be able to move to the next steps. You can also stay at NBC for up to a year um, without um, like moving forward. So let's say you pay your fee now and 11 months from today, you pay the second one, that's okay. But you have to do it with under 12 months. Okay. Okay, so you pay your fees. And then even on the portal, it has steps by step. It won't let you move forward, even if you want to. So the DS-260, that's our actual visa application. It's not the USCIS. We're actually, this is our actual visa application. So it is important because this is what the consulate's going to look at. So the DS-260 is about the ben beneficiary. The beneficiary is asking for a visa, for an appointment, for an interview. So it's about the beneficiary. Okay. So you're gonna it's, it. it's member of the family. We need like a separate DS. Like if there is a, uh, the, the spouse and the kid, do they need like a separate one or uh, you can put them in the same uh, DS? For U.S. citizens, if you're petitioning several um, family members, it mm -hmm. has to be separate. That's okay. the downside of the um u.s citizens whereas um the green card holders they do have to they can go on the same petition at uscis at nbc you pay separate fees okay and this is the hardest one number four step oh four. That, that's <laughs> the finance <laughs> the money guy <laughs> yeah after david a support so that's the one everyone gets um confused or stuck because the requirement at times can be challenging. So um, you, again, you can stay at MVC for a year and use that to your benefit, to your advantage. But let's say you do meet the financials. We're gonna go through it in just a moment. After the financials, then they check all your papers. They say, okay, you're good to go. Instead of saying approved, they say documentary qualified. So that's when you know you, you got through NVC. <laughs> And the, what step you have to do, like as soon as uh, you in number one, do you have like to go online, sign into the website, and then enter your case number, pay the fees, and then uh, you can log into your DS to sixty, fill it up, complete it, and then uh, you have to fill up the immigration form eight eight six four. But can you do that like the eight six four or step four? Can you do yeah. it before, like with the I one thirty, or you have to wait? You can do it on paper to practice, but you can't submit it. So you, so, you have to submit it at this uh, point, at this stage. Right. It goes okay. in that order. Um, sometimes, sometimes, very rare, it'll let you flip three and four. But either way, you won't get approved until all of it is done. <laughs> yeah, you have one year to done all the five steps. Yeah, all okay. five steps. So NBC does have its own portal. The case number, this number one, you'll get an email. Once you get that email, then you go onto the NBC portal. Um, would you like me to show them? Yeah, if you have. Okay. Yeah. So remember, we were. Remember, we were at USCIS. We filed yeah. our application online, and we got approved. So now we're going to go. the department of state sorry guys if this is so much uh, overwhelming uh, <laughs> life raikun and inshallah anybody need information now most of the lives we do like we leave them as a library uh it says in the page anybody needs anything and also we may put like a version in youtube it will be easy for people to just log in and uh, can see all the information and uh, josie will be available also along the way in whatsapp group if you can contact her so give me, give me a moment all right take your time so we're gonna have uh, now the rest of the process هاد الابليكيشن الا ما كنتيش كتعرف كيفاش تكملهم من الاحسن تمشي عند شي لوير ولا شي واحد نوليجبل لحد الان ما كاينش واحد يعني معلومات اللي غتكون هارد تو انتر ولكن ات ستيل هاف ذا ابيليتي تو دو ات اف يو فولو اب بالانستراكشن اف يو اسك كويشن بيفور ميكين اني ميستيكس 
راه تقدر يعني تعمرهم بلا حاجه لاي محامي لان المشكله ملي كتدفع الدوسي ديالك عند المحامي عاوتاني كيكون المحامي بيزي ويقدر ينسال الدوسي ديالك ان هي دازن فالو اب سو اتس بيتر باش اي واحد يعرف الدوسي ديالو فين غادي ويعرف يتابعو باش ما يبقاش يتسنى في المحامي هو اللي يقول لي شنو دير سو جو هاد تشيستر جوزي اوكي سو This is the NVC portal. You get the information, the case number via email. That's why you need to wait. You, it comes within two weeks, although that timeline can always change, but usually it's about two weeks. So this is where you enter. So remember we were at USCIS, we got approved. We move on to NVC. It's a new portal. Okay. Sorry, keeps doing that. Okay, so we went to NVC. So these are the steps. Now we're gonna go one by one. So we got our case number, we logged in. You do your DS260. These are, and you paid your fees. This is what it looks like. On the website, there's an actual sample. So you can download it and you can look at the questions. I'll also, um, all this information, I'll post it in my group and on my website so you can download. But it, this is all about the beneficiary, their, his, where he lived, uh, his profession or her profession, her uh, parents' information. Um, so this is more for security checks. So this is important that it's accurate. Okay. So here's the um, Over to level. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this is where everyone gets stuck a lot. Not everyone, a lot of people. So you have to meet 125 of the income um, poverty guidelines. So let's say uh, for a family of two, it will be the applicant and the beneficiary. They will have to make this a year, 22,887. So over here, I provided an example, how you count it. It's the applicant. If the applicant has dependents living in the home, and the beneficiary. So let's say Josie applicant me, and let's say I have two kids that I claim on my taxes and my Moroccan partner. That would be a household of four. So I would have to make 34,687. That's the income I have to meet. Now, NVC lets you turn in a 1040 with your W-2s, um, they also let you use um, assets. What, what about uh, unemployment income? Is that considered an income that people can use in their uh, supports? Because we know an employment person is not working. And I feel that, I feel that your support is like you have to show that you can uh, work and uh, support that person. Unemployment does count as income if you're paying taxes. So for unemployment, I believe you can choose to get taxes withheld or not so if you're paying taxes on it you can well, use it uh, as all, all unemployment is taxable like uh, withholding taxes or not that's like the taxpayer option but at the end like it's taxable my yes. question is like does it going to uh, cause like any risk at the oh. applicant is it going to be accepted it's going to be accepted there's no like red flag like oh if i'm unemployed they're not going to let me petition my 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 um family member no, they don't look at it that way. NVC makes sure that you check off the list, like you meet the criteria. Gotcha. Um, the same, the one that they don't count, and I've seen it being rejected, is like if you're an in-home caregiver, IHSS, mm -hmm. um, that income does not count as income. I think that's file is Schedule H, household income. What was that? It's filed in Schedule S. It's like it's called like household income. No, um, usually uh, the in-home care. It's like you're a caregiver for a family member that's ill. Oh, okay, okay, got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. Okay. Yeah, and so you get a paycheck just like a regular job. And mm -hmm. so even though you get a pay stub and paycheck, and that income does not count as taxable income for the purpose of immigration. All right. Can can just like give us brief uh, explanation about uh, joint sponsor or co-sponsor? Yep. 
So you'll get through NBC, no problem. Let's say you use 1040 W2, self-employment, whatever you use to meet, you'll get through NBC. The problem is Morocco. Morocco likes to see most recent tax year, your 1040, uh, I'm sorry, your most recent tax year transcript. They prefer the transcript. And if you don't give it to them, they might give you a, a hard time just to give you a hard time because they like to see the transcript. So let's say you don't need income. You'll have to get um, a joint sponsor. So let's start down here. So a joint sponsor can be a relative, a friend, an acquaintance, your boss. It could be anybody. Um, don't, don't pay someone to be your sponsor. <laughs> Make sure that they know you and you know them because it's a big responsibility. It's a responsibility for 10 years, whether you're, you stay with your partner or not, whether whatever happens, divorce, the, uh, whatever happens, you, they're still responsible for you for those 10 years. And let's say they have a spouse and they do it together. One spouse passes away. The other one is still responsible for those two years, 10 years, I'm sorry. So they must have a legal status, which means a green card holder or a U.S. citizen. They also complete an I-864 of their own. So me as the applicant, I'm going to complete an I-864, even though I don't meet the income. Even though my, my money is not enough, I'm still going to complete an I-864. And then my joint sponsor is going to complete an I-864. If they're married and they're using that ink, that person's income, their partner's income to meet, they have to fill out an I-864A. So let's say I'm the applicant. I don't have enough money to meet. And Mr. Mr. Neighbor says, hey, I'll be your joint sponsor. And my neighbor's married. His wife has to complete an I-864A. Okay. And again, CASA doesn't like assets. They like earned income only. And okay. Just to explain people earned income, you know, like self-employment, wages, yes. all that stuff, it's considered an earned income. Yeah, you can't, they don't like to see you use like a rental property <laughs> or a luxury car or um, like- Anything uh, that you pay insurance for is because it's at risk. Yeah. So cost is very picky about that or even foreign income. They don't like to see that. Okay. All right, so let's say, so let's say your um, documents are accepted. This is what it's going to look like at NBC. It's going to say accepted. That's how you know that everything is good to go. And you're going to receive an email saying you are documentarily qualified. That means you're approved at NBC. So we got through USCIS. We got approved through NBC. And so now, that's considered a good news. Like, uh, yeah, uh huh. That's a big step uh, in the process. Yeah, and remember, if you don't meet income, you can stay at NVC for up to a year. Just make contact with them for a year, and then you can wait another year. Make contact with them like that. So as long as you make contact with them within a year, at least once a year. So what I do, if we can go back a little bit here, with Casa, uh, what I do is. If you didn't meet income last year, like right now, we're so close to the new year that you can file taxes. Let's say you made you were self-employed and you made cash income. You can report it in 2022 income taxes. You're in wait at NBC for your new taxes and then submit that. And would the like people that doesn't have enough income like from prior years, uh, would it be like an amended return to reach the income level uh, accepted or uh, it's going to take time for processing and may delay the process of the visa? For CASA, I wouldn't recommend that. You CASA, thankfully, in that side, they don't look at the last three years. They only care about the most current year. Okay. So even if you didn't meet the other two years, but you met the most recent one, they'll, they just like to see that one. Okay. Okay, so we got through, we got approved, we got documentary qualified. So now we're waiting for our interview. We're gonna stay here at NVC waiting for an interview. The consulate sends us a letter. 
MDC has nothing to do with the interview. So once you get this email DQ, all your questions are directed to the consulate. NBC already released your file. They cannot answer questions. They cannot advocate for you. They cannot expedite. So now you're waiting for your interview. Before, at this point, I would do registering for a vendor. So as you're waiting for an interview, you could register with Atomix. If you're not familiar, that's the vendor the consulate uses to um, for you to pick up your your mm -hmm. yeah your passport with your visa, and that's where you go to submit documents. Let's say you you have something outstanding, that's where you will go to submit documents. So you can register with them now. Um, you you said you like also the original documents with the passports, or you gotta pick them from the consulates. So you mean like if you have outstanding documents? Yeah, like you know, no, no, like if you submit original documents, uh -huh. would you be you gonna pick them at the day of the interview at the consulate, or they will be with the passports and you're gonna pick them up from Aramex? Oh, okay. So at this point, you're only registering, you're not gonna submit anything to Aramex. Okay. The only time you're going to submit to Aramex is at the very end after your, your interview. Right, yeah. That's if if you need it, if they request something from you. Okay. So I'll come back to Aramex when you have to submit something to them. Okay. Sorry, my husband is already here. Oh, it's okay. Say hi to him. <laughs> okay. So we're at the consulate. We got our interview letter. Right now, thankfully for U.S. citizens petitioning a spouse, they're, you're only waiting about a month, maybe two months for an interview letter. If you are a green card holder, I think it's about the same. I haven't seen a difference. Um, now, K-1 visas are waiting more. But it's about, let's say, at the longest, it's two months. We get the interview letter today, and our interview is going to be in two months from today. So it's not so too much of a wait. So from there, you need to get a medical exam. There's three doctors that are approved. And um, they're listed on the USC on the NBC website, and I'll provide those. On... Somebody contacts us. They say like it's hard to to reach them. Yes, and that's why I put it on here. They okay. don't answer their phone. They're overbooked, and you sometimes you kind of have to give them a little incentive. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yes. So what I always suggest is that's to funny. go in person. And be generous <laughs> to them. <laughs> we call us we call us coffee. Yes. <laughs> so um, it's worked most of the time. Recently, they're really backed up and they were really busy, so they were kind of rude about it at two of the offices. But the third one took it. <laughs> but what that's about my... like if uh, if it's uh, completely booked and there is like time for the interview, it's not gonna go to your interview. You can do your medical after your interview you just won't get your visa that day but go to your interview you don't want to wait okay so medical exam go in person they're not going to answer you go in person be nice to them and a little something um you have to have your interview letter and your passport the cost is about 260 to 280 because inflation's coming in so it's mm -hmm. varying right now if you have your immunization record, it might be less. But let's say you don't have your immunization record, you have zero, so they will have to you have to get them all over. So that's why it's that much. Um, they're looking for you don't have to have your COVID, your COVID test, your COVID um vaccine. They were requiring it, but they're not anymore. But is it like uh, in the websites? It's it's showing like it's required. Is that being updated? It's not showing that it's required, and it's not showing that it's not required. So, based on your experience, they don't ask for them at the consulate. Correct. In the of, like okay. today and yesterday, they weren't asking for it. And that's for all uh, kind of uh, visas, like you know, for DV lottery, for uh, petitioning family, and all other kind, or just for this category? Just for immigrant visa. Immigrant visa. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So they're looking for disease like TB or um, HIV. So uh, diseases that you can transfer to other people. Okay. Um, 
sometimes drugs, let the doctor's going to ask you, do you smoke? And if you say yes, they're going to say, okay, well, that could be a, like a habit or um, mm -hmm. what do you smoke? And if you say that you've smoked or drank in the past, even if it was a year ago, they're going to make you go test. And that's just going to prolong your, your um, process. Okay, so uh, tuberculosis and uh, drugs. Uh, what about alcohol? Like it doesn't affect your uh, your tests. It does. So they're not specifically testing. I'm not talking about being drunk. Just the use of alcohol. Yeah. So they're not in the in the checkup. They're not looking for drugs and alcohol. But when the doctor asks you, "Do you smoke? What do you smoke? Do you drink? What do you drink?" If you tell them, "Oh yeah." Um, my friend came a year ago and I took a drink. They're going to take that as, oh, he has to have it. You send them to get tested. So it's up to you if you open that door and how you answer. They're not, the test itself is the, the what is it, the lab itself. They're not looking for drugs or alcohol unless you tell them, then the doctor will order that. Okay. Good let's say, know. let's say you come out positive. Then they'll make you do like a treatment for 12 months. So for 12 months, you won't be able to immigrate and they'll make you test every month to make sure that you're clean for 12 months. I've seen it be shortened to like six months, but typically it's 12 months. So you set yourself back. Okay. Okay. So you have your medical exam. The results are sent to the consulate electronically. There's no more package. It's oh, they don't there. give you that closed envelope and you take it with you to the consulate? No more. Okay. So everything's electronic. It gets there within an hour or so. I've seen people go from the medical exam, and by the time they get to the consulate, they already have it. Um, so the only bad thing is that right now, since they're behind, uh, CASA takes a long time to come back to your chart. So if you're waiting on your medical exam, it, it takes them like a month or so for them to come back and review your file again. So let's say you got your medical exam. You're, it's time for your interview. This is the most important part of the whole process because the consul is the one deciding if you get your visa or not. And with Casablanca, it has a rep for being a high, um, what is it, like high turnaround de denials. Oh, okay. Um, oh. And so this, from what I, I've spoken to a um, past consulate officer, and these were some of the things that I was um, advised. So dress casual, don't dress in a suit and tie, don't go too relaxed, just be yourself because they've seen, they see people 100, 200, each officer, I think they have to see 250 Per and day? also there is there is like a rumor about uh, there is like one officer that's like uh, always happy and mm -hmm. always facilitating things with people and there is one like always uh, angry and always uh, has issue with people uh, i i never been there but that's how people describe mm -hmm. those uh, people who work at the consulate there yeah you do hear the feedback and the stories are true although the seals do need to be they alternate every 2 years um, so they're not always the same ones. Um, and so, okay. So you dress casual, you have to go in there confident. You can't be in there like nervous, looking down, quiet. They, everyone recommends like, don't say more than you need to. No, this is your one chance, your two, three minutes to convince them that you, you need that visa approval, that they're making the right decision. And so don't give them like all this much but also don't stay quiet and the, what information should the, the applicant beneficiary actually takes with them uh, uh on the day of the interview like beside the other document there is any additional stuff that they need to take with them yes so you take with you everything you submitted to nbc and this is the list again remember the beneficiary you take your originals so everything under number two, that's the Moroccan. You take your originals and take a look that there's two um, records. There's the court record and there's this the police certificate. And there's examples for that as well. 
I, I didn't list them on here, but I can provide that also. So there's two. Um, those are originals. Okay. Um, beneficiary originals, I think they don't have an expiration date. Applicant documents, those can be copies, all of this. Okay. So let me just explain to the, can you go back? I will explain mm -hmm. it in Arabic just because it's very important. So we're going to say, for example, Ahmed Kiskun here, he has a citizen, Jewish with Amina in the Maghreb. Amina will give us here. So Amina is the beneficiary, it's necessary, they are all in the top, beneficiary originals, it's necessary to have documents original, and Ahmed, the petitioner, it's necessary to have copies, it doesn't matter. هاد التشيك ليست كاينه في في اونلاين ولا اوه ام اسكين يو ان عربي سي ذاتس واي اي وونت تو بوت عربي كان انجلش بيكوز اي نو اي انديرستان ا ليتل بيت سو وير يو جيت ذيس وير يو جيت ذيس ليست فروم لايك ات از اني لينك ذات يو كان شير ويز اس ذات وي كان ايل بوست ات ان ذا جروب اوكي ذيس واز لايك فروم ماي بيرسونال ريكورد Ah, okay. So it's not like a PDF that you downloaded online. Correct. So okay. I'll post it in the group to share. Um, okay. So those are the documents you take with you, and your receipt, the DS two sixty receipt. So if you, we go back a little bit. Right here, print the confirmation page. So remember, when we were in VC, you have to print this. It gives you two opportunities to print. Okay. All right, so we go in, it's time for the interview. They will ask you questions. I mean, there's a, we can do a whole thing on, on interview tips and, and suggestions, but most importantly, they're gonna get information straight out of your I-130 and your DS-260. Um, so you need to know what you wrote. <laughs> And also, you have to show them, uh, like, you know, it's a true relationship between spouses. Mm -hmm. uh, like, for example, do you need to take any photos, like any events that's uh, to provide proofs that this person is a true marriage? Or you just have to give verbal statements? For the most part, they already made up their mind by the time you walk in. You have to like convince them that yes, they made the right choice, or if they already have in their mind that it's going to be a no, like you have to take evidence that or speak actually because they might not even take what you have in your hand. So that's why it's important to submit the evidence at USCIS at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And if you forgot or need more, need to add, you can do it again at NBC. Um, when you do it at the interview, again, you run the risk of them not even looking at your. So the interview is last chance to present every evidence or documents that may help your uh, your case. Right, and that's why it's important to go in there confident because when you're when you're sure of your relationship, you're able to answer these questions and share about your life or your excitement or what your plans are. Gotcha. Also, if they ask, like, what do you plan to do? It's okay to say I'm gonna work. Like it's normal for people to work. So don't feel like they're gonna be like, oh, um, you're just there to make money. No, they know well, that they, they, they want you to come here to work so you yeah. can do taxes. <laughs> That's something positive. <laughs> yeah, like you're gonna be with your partner and you're gonna make a life by working. <laughs> exactly, and being a good citizen. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so do so, you have any, anything like the next slide? Yeah, so you either walk out with your visa approved or they're gonna say, I need to think about it. And they're gonna give you a 221G. That's the dreaded 221G. That's the and, administrative processing decision. That's Yes. And so your your file will say refused and it, a lot get scared because they're like, they denied it. But refused, they changed it from AP administrative processing to refuse so that they wouldn't have to go back and deny you. Because before AP, they had to either close it or, or approve it. Where now if it's refused, it's closed unless something changes. So they don't have to go back and make okay. a, a final decision. So let's say they're all gonna say refused. Even if you're approved, it'll say refused. 
because they need time to enter the information in their computer. So let's say you get a 221 gene and it happens often. Read, read it thoroughly and submit the necessary documents. And so you can do that online and at Atomix. So that would be the vendor we saw at the beginning. You go in person and you submit it. There's an office in Casa and one in Rabat. Uh, okay, you don't submit it, upload it online. You have to be in person. Can you mail it to them instead or? Uh... No, you submit online. Um, to their, there's an email where you submit for 221G and I'll also list it. Mm -hmm. So I always recommend to do both of them. Email it and do it in person. Just to ensure like it's going to reach the, the consulate. Yes. Okay. So the most frequent reason for 221 is for um, financials. So the transcript. Yes, you get through NBC with 1040 and W2, but CASA doesn't like to see that. They want to see the transcript. So do that from the beginning. Don't take that risk. It's better to have more than not have it. Um, that's number one. And then number two is the red flags. <laughs> and that's, that's something, something that you don't want to see on your folder after you had you have the interview. Right. Right, but for the most part, um, for now, they're, they've been very generous. <laughs> okay, and uh, with the approval, like you don't get any uh, documents at the time of the, after the interview, like you pick up everything from the council? Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so let's say you are approved. Most of the time, they'll give you a little white paper that says approved, and they'll give you instructions like safe uh, immigrant safety um, tips when you immigrate, like where to get help. Um, most of the time they give you that little paper, but if they don't, don't freak out if your online account says refused. If the officer told you you're approved, then you're approved. Um, I haven't, very rarely is it that um, they go back on the word. For the most part, yeah, you're approved. So they'll keep your passport. That's always a good sign. And they'll issue a visa right on your passport. So they'll it's like a sticker on your passport. So it's not a, like an actual card that says visa. Um, so that's why they keep your passport. When your visa is ready, they'll send it to Atomix. And so they'll email you a PIN number to enter here. So you'll go to the, when you register to the website, you'll enter that PIN. So like after the interview, all the tracking will be performed in Atomix websites. Mm -hmm. And the, you just have to enter the, the number to track your uh, your visa. And after it shows, like uh, after Aramex received the documents, uh, do you do you gonna receive like a notification email or you have to keep checking uh, to make sure it's it's there? You can keep checking the CAC site and the where it updates your visa status. Mm -hmm. it, it goes from different um, statuses. It'll go from refused to AP to issued in transit so that's how you can track like okay it's gonna go to atomix the bad thing is that it doesn't always track an atomix tracking system is not very accurate either <laughs> oh my god yes. they don't have coffee shop you don't give them co coffee to, no. to okay so <laughs> you can call um if that's a 50 50 you can go in person that's a 100 percent assured so a lot of the times a lot they have the visa there so if it's like two three days and your portal already said issued um go check out a mix it's probably there two to three business days <laughs> gathering the dust in somebody's desk maybe yeah and because even when you call over the phone they'll be like no we don't have it and then it was sitting there for a few days already um you can also authorize someone else to go check for you um, they have a document on their website that you can sign. Most of the time, you, they just show your passport or your ID and they'll give it to them or give uh, them information. Okay. And uh, I just want to see, like, Nasli, uh, Lena, and she question. I have only so far one question. Uh, for you, I have last question, I guess. Uh, the next slide is questions. But my last question to you right now is uh, after uh, the the visa is being approved, uh, how long it takes the beneficiary spouse 
to come here like uh, before like their visa expired or something is like a, a six months expiration date or like they can come anytime they want so uh, you have um you have up to six months from the date your visa was issued so whatever date was stamped on your visa you have up to six months to immigrate um you can immigrate even one day before the expiration date or you can immigrate that same day you got it um so you do have to do it before then the other thing is right here you have if you get approved you have to pay your visa fee so you get a temporary one-year visa on your passport but to get an actual green card a permanent green card for two or ten years you have to pay the fee and you can pay that before you leave the country or after you leave the country you the time starts running once you come go through customs so if you pay it before but you don't immigrate till like three months later the time doesn't start counting until you go through customs uh so it's better to pay it uh, before and uh, you yeah. may travel before also like if uh, you don't have to wait to the last minute before traveling yeah mm -hmm. a lot of the times like the visa process is a big expense and so some do choose to wait because you do have a year since you your visa stamp for a year um to pay that fee okay so uh i think we have uh do you have anything to add uh, with your powerpoint or any any other information that you may, you want to give us like verbally um yes <laughs> two things um I always say this to both the beneficiary and the applicant. If or when it's a, a spousal visa, for whatever reason, let's say it doesn't work out, the beneficiary keeps their green card. Just because you divorced or did they didn't go to your house or they didn't want to contribute, it didn't work out, they don't lose their visa. They get to keep it. If it's a two-year green card, they have and you guys get divorced that's a different process an extra form but they can still keep their green card the 10 year of course they have 10 years so you have no say from then on the only time that it could be redacted is it to, if they go through the annulment process and that's really difficult and challenging i've only seen one case in our group in the six years that i've been doing it and uh, would the, the age difference between spouses uh, raise the flag or the bars in the interview and may cause inconvenience or uh, refusal? Yes. So CASA is very big on that. You you can be like 10 year difference and you're still OK. There's no red flag. When it's more than 10 years, that's when it's a red flag. Um, the way we do it is the more time spent together is better, not the most frequent the longer. So it's better to be there, to be together for months rather than five, six times. So it's good to be there two times for three months at a time instead of six, seven, one week visits. Okay. Um, if, your, if the uh, applicant's family can come to Morocco and meet your family, that's also a good way to um, demonstrate like uh, on a, a good relationship. Mm -hmm. um, but the best way to decrease age, to overcome age difference is time spent together. Okay. And uh, later on, uh, I'm going to leave uh, the WhatsApp group. I'm going to add it in the chat box. Anyone that uh, want to join for additional question or additional assistance, uh, Sister Josie will guide uh, everyone through. Uh, I think we have one question from somebody, and I think you already answered that uh, سبحان الله السلام عليكم عندي سؤال شكرا لك شكرا للسيده اللي في امريكا جات هجره السيده أه في امريكا جات هجره قرعه لوتري وتزوجت شاب مغربي كم المده التي يجلس لكي يلتحق بها سو ذيس ليدي جاست كيم ثرو دي في لوتري اند شي غا ميريد ان موروكو اند دير اسك لايك هاو لونغ ات تيكس ذيم فور فور ذا سباوس تو تو اوبتين ذير ايميغرانت فيزا did they get married before she got the TV or after? Well, it's it seems like it's after. Okay, then she has to adjust first and then she can petition the spouse. 
so i mean like she's already dv lottery she got the green card so it's, it's she's considered lpr but does she have she wait like a few months before she apply for a spouse she can do it right away she can do it right away okay mm -hmm. uh but as you said it takes longer and it has a different process than uh citizenship then yeah then the u.s citizen petitioning yeah if if she waits to become a citizen it may probably be the same thing the same way as her petitioning now so i wouldn't wait i would just do it now all righty and the uh, brother mordino my family case was uh, a sunset is that like a technical term say it again he said like my family case was a sunset like uh, the sundown uh anyway and the fiscal year oh so okay so l l he said that his case is in the end of the fiscal year so probably by september 30 or something so i think those uh, cases they may expire too if you reach like a year like yeah, a visa so okay so that he stuck at nvc yes yeah you have up to a year to make contact so just log on to nvc update your phone number even if it's the same and that's your contact and then you can wait another year all right he said i adjusted status here at the end of the fiscal year oh oh, oh okay you can petition whoever you want so that's not a problem no you okay. could even even for for couples like let's say they're they married in morocco and they they can petition that same day or the next day you don't have to wait there's no waiting period okay because he says so did not have time to apply my family back home at morocco well sometimes priority like sometimes it's better to do the application and uh, you forget about it and then uh, you get the next step because it's a it's a long step there is a lot of uh, paper to f uh, to fill up there is a lot of forms to complete it's better to start as soon as possible if you if you want to bring your spouses the, the soonest you start the soonest uh, your spouse will get a visa yeah because for green card holders remember they go to the california service center and they're like two years behind so you're going to be just waiting for two years so it's best that you file early in those two years it's almost three years and you could become a citizen <laughs> Cool. Uh, I think you're tired already. We already been like uh, one hour uh, and a half uh, live. Uh, hopefully, like uh, we can get uh, people to see this live letter. And anyone has question, they may still uh, ask her. Uh, Sister Josie have a WhatsApp group, and she may come to the page and answer any questions. Uh, the only thing, don't uh, you know? I seen some question in social media based on way, what I see right now and based on what I see in the official websites. Uh, people sometimes give the wrong answers, and uh, they give wrong answer with confidence. Like you, you will think that's uh, it's like a Bible. Uh, <laughs> so if you don't know an answer, you may either go to a professional, somebody that will. Uh, guide you through without uh, misleading you or you may go to the official websites and get the accurate information from there official websites always ends with that golf any website that's belong to the immigration or uscis or mvc or any website that belong a government's website you will see it ends with the dot uh, gov and try to avoid any scams or uh, any stuff that this is uh josie G Guevara or Givara? Guevara. Guevara. Okay. So yeah. Guevara, it's like a <laughs> a statue that's a, a holy statue. It's, it's like a some somebody from uh, where is Guevara? Cuba. Cuba. Yeah. Yeah. He was. Yeah. Okay. A guerrilla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. And even in my groups, I I also only do verifiable um resources i don't mm -hmm. do youtubes i don't do like um other attorneys i only do verifiable resources like uscis or department of state precisely because we need to get the information straight from the source okay cool mm -hmm. uh, i think there is another question from yusuf somebody came in uh, to the us by american ex-wife and then he got divorced he has a green card of 10 years and got married again in Morocco. Can he apply for her? 
Um, he has to wait. How many years has it been since they divorced? He has to wait. I can't remember if it's. Two. So there is like a trash hole that uh, they need to wait that time before they can yeah. apply. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, I think you have to wait two or three years. If you got your green card through marriage and you're divorced, you have to wait like two or three years to petition your new spouse. I can't remember the exact years, but you do have to wait like two or three years to petition the new spouse. Okay. Alrighty. So uh, anything to wrap up? Conclusion? No. Uh, Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you for your time. And uh, hopefully, like we can see you because we discussed you have other information, uh, non, non immigrants worker visa, and mm -hmm. there is other stuff that you may do. It's not just uh, this. Yeah. Uh, please, guys, share this live. Uh, and uh, as I said, if you have any additional questions, you're welcome to leave your comments uh, and uh, any information uh, that you may uh, want to, to have later on. And uh, Sister Josie, I appreciate your time. I appreciate the efforts. Uh, I appreciate uh, all the thing. And also, I, I, I thank your husband, too, uh, for allowing you to have a uh, discussion with us. And yeah, he's here now. <laughs> well, say hi to him. Like, I spoke to him last time. And uh, hopefully, we're going to meet again in the business group uh, to, to resume our activity there next weekend. But... For sure, we're going to have you again in another episode to, to spot the lights on different form. Uh, maybe when we have the DV lottery, uh, maybe we try to give them additional information about uh, the visa processing, the interview, and uh, all the necessary legal information. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, thank you very much for watching us like for a one hour and a half. And have a good night. And uh, I wish you like uh, the beginning, a nice beginning of the next week. Uh, Sister Josie, you have anything to add? That was it. just a, if you wouldn't mind going to the Facebook page or my website and just give it a like. That's greatly appreciated. Really, this is the information uh, for her. Uh, this is her phone number, uh, websites. And uh, do you have like a Facebook account? Yes. Uh huh. It's at the uh, the visa specialist. That's right here. Okay. And that's the handle. So that's her information. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you.